What's the crack, lads? What's going on? I am back. We are back with some Player of the Week reviews. Now, a lot of people have been asking me while I've been away about Van Dyke, but we're home and we're going to get straight into the boosters today. David Odegaard and, of course, Virgil van Dijk. Now, I've been a big fan of van Dijk for the, pretty much for the entirety of my main squad playthrough as I've been playing with eFootball 2024 and my main road to Division 1 style squad. Just to get rid of a couple of the lesser players in this, right? I'm sure that a lot of people will find Gomez, maybe that will be able to go in as a box-to-box. -box. He's just a simple box to box, you know, he's got some fairly good player skills, double touch, first time shot, low lofted pass and slight tackle and inter interception fighting spirit is always good, especially when he's on A form. He's a pretty okay average kind of starter box to box CMF. You can get better players. Honestly, I think standard Bellingham is probably going to be better than this guy um, in that role that you'll probably want to play him, which is a more an attacking option than a kind of a defensive. Because of that defensive awareness and the lack of aggression that you're not really going to be able to get him to that level of box-to-box -box defensive capabilities. We also have AS Roma's Slivar. Is that how you pronounce his name? Sivlar? Sivlar? Anyway, this guy is just your average goalkeeper. I've kind of made a couple of points about Schmeichel on Discord um, where I've talked about Schmeichel and people saying that, you know, he's the best player in the game, he's this, he's that. Listen, every goalkeeper, if you come up against a good opponent from Division 2 onwards, anytime, anytime a good opponent or if you're playing somebody gets a one-on-one -on -one chance, they're going to pop it home seven, eight, or even nine times out of ten, man. So I think goalkeepers are there as more of kind of a mental thing when you do get that one-on-one. -on -one. You, you do prefer to have your checks, your Casillas's, your Neuer's, your Oliver Kahn's, and of course, big-time booster Schmeichel, a huge presence in the net. These goalkeepers that they release in the Player of the Weeks are very similar to kind of the centre-backs or kind of like, apart from Van Dijk, we'll get to him but the centre midfielders in this, because there's a lot of them that are just very average. These player of the weeks are aimed at newcomers, people downloading the game fresh, that don't really know how to build a squad yet, and they're just basically cherry-picking players that can slot in and do a job for you straight off the bat, right? So, this is another player that we're talking about. This is more of an attacking midfielder as well, box-to-box. -box. Kind of a, you know, nice skills, nice combination, but again, not at the level that you would require if you're looking to get up those divisions. If you're playing division, you know, 10 up to 5, 4, maybe even 3, depending on how good you are on the sticks, you can make do with a lot of these cards, but they are just average, right? I would also say the same for Augusta. Augusto, this guy has got pace. He's got bags of pace, actually, with 88 speed, and the stamina is quite good. He's actually got some pl fairly decent player skills as well, but that's kind of where it ends, even though he's got unwavering form. That's, that's a non-factor nowadays. And I also think that uh, Lucas Hernandez, brother to Tio Hernandez, of course, both down as left-backs or centre-backs, both can play very, very nice positions. Um... I feel he's the same. He's just like, even though he's got blocker as a left back and he can play as a central back, I feel like the center backs and the left backs now that they're making, you can just obviously get better GP variants or even free variants of these cards that you don't have to spend your coins. Now, I do think that this guy is good. He's also got quite good pace. He's not going to get to that meta 90 speed, but he does have good acceleration. So I do like this card. If you are going to use him as a central back, I definitely think that he's worth it because he does have heading. He has interception, man marking blocker areas he's literally every player skill that you could possibly want but when you're coming up against the likes of the big boys like your Ramarios and stuff like that there's different tiers to defender and center midfielder and emfs and all that that you need to have and i think that this guy is just on the cusp of that stage before the meta right if you're not worried about playing meta you just want to have fun this card will be beastly for you i also will take a look as well as Ku at kubo this guy has always been a player that's interested me i like the center forward variant of him or the version of him um that we had before of course he's got nice player skills he does have soul control and double touch but he does not unfortunately he doesn't have flip flap so that's a bit of a concern if you're looking to do the ball roll or the special dub double touch or advanced double touch or whatever you want to call it, double touch level four, level three, whatever you guys call it. But I do feel like that this is a good prolific winger. He's going to be having good player ID and he just handles really nice and slick and smooth in the game. But I feel again that he's just under par a little bit, especially with that tight possession only at 84. It's not going to go higher than 86 with the manager boost. So that's a little bit of a concern because you can't train these players up. Also, we have Lorente. Now, this guy is definitely one of the best budget GP players to buy when you're starting off. One of the best free-to-play uh, players as well. So if you've used his GP standard card, uh, this is a very unique card. He's a goal poacher, but he's got some brilliant player skills, track back, man marking, interception. 
there seems to be a little bit of a thing with players that are attacking players and have attacking player styles check out my song crass and player id where i talk about this and increasing their defense capabilities a little bit right Speed, acceleration, stamina, very, very high on a goal poach in CF, but balance, anti-possession is not going to even hit 80, which is a bit of a pity. There is no real reason to use this guy other than for a bit of crack. Obviously, you can use him any position, including right back, right midfielder, DMF to center forward. So you can do some really fun things with his sub tactic. But yeah, in terms of a straight up CF, he's probably not worth spinning for. Because we do have two other really good CFs in this. David is definitely a player that I really, really like to use back when we were playing free to play. He's actually going to get a booster here of plus three to his agility, which is speed, acceleration, balance, and stamina, um, which is going to be literally going to come into fruition here with the 90 speed. And of course, the 90 acceleration. So the stamina and the balance is not too much of an issue with this guy, even though I always say that goal poachers need to have the balance quite high. Tight possession and balance with this card, because you've got that raw speed and that raw power and you're going to be getting plus two, it means that his attacking awareness and his acceleration are going to be high enough to override a lot of those issues with him. Whereas what you had with Lorente, it's kind of just the balance and the speed and the, the tight possession are just a little bit too low with the other stats not overriding those. So I do also feel that with his double touch and his heel trick, his one time one touch pass, his first time shot, there's a lot to like about this card. Is he going to be a meta type CF? No, even standard Mbappe is better. But it's about fair, it's about variety and mixing it up. Now, we do have Odegaard, Van Dijk and Hyland. I'm going to take my time on these a little bit, but just to kind of mention, Hyland does not get the booster. We thought that he would. 86 finishing, 82 attack and awareness. His tight possession and balance. The balance is a killer on this card, man. I mean, you can get by with any card and any player at any level in this game. If you're a beast at this game, or even if you're just above average at this game, you can score with anybody. The game is very balanced that way to make you be able to score up front with Collar or Romario. Obviously, if you play to their strengths. But I do feel like this Hoyland card is a bit of a letdown, especially his balance. And I would say also his attack and awareness. He should have been a little bit higher. Maybe I'm biased as a United fan, but I do think that it's a disappointing card. Odegaard here as a CMF orchestrator. Pretty decent card as well. Speed and acceleration don't really matter for the role he's going to be playing. He's a luxury item. If you have a passer in midfield that you just want to have that's able to finish as well, you don't need to touch this card. He's got everything that you could possibly want. No look pass, which is always a beautiful animation when it pulls off. You've got rising shot, long range shooting. You've also got first time shot, one touch pass, true passing. No low lofted pass, which is unusual for an orchestrator of this class. But I do feel like it is a very strong card. And I know that some people that love Odegaard will absolutely love this card because he's got low pass and ball control very, very high. With the manager boost, he's going to have dribbling and, of course, that tight possession into the 90s. So it's a very decent card apart from the lack of acceleration, which you don't really need on this card for the role he's going to be playing. That leaves us with Van Dijk. So I've been kind of like very, kind of like pro Van Dijk ever since I started my main squad. And I do think that he's a beast of a card. Interestingly enough, he gets a plus three to his finishing and heading, as well as jumping and physical contact. So he's not going to hit the 90s on defensive aware, on tackling, aggression, or defensive engagement, because he's only going to get a plus two with the manager bonus. Um, so tackling is going to be stuck at 89, aggression at 88, and defensive engagement at 88. But his speed is going to be above 80, which is nice for a Van Dyke card that's down as a build-up. When you're playing a build-up CB, you don't need him hassling and aggressive and chasing balls around like a lunatic. That's more the role of a destroyer. But So this is a nice card, but we will see, man. We will see who we do pack and, and do spin. Now, also on top of that as well, next Monday, I'm going to do a video on this, but next Monday, it's looking like we're going to be getting Roy card, Ambrosini, and Baggio. We might also get Ronaldinho. He could be in this pack as well. There's one or two other players that we might get in this. But um, yeah, that's what it's looking like at the moment. So it just depends whether you want to save your coins for that. At least you know what you're getting with the Player of the Weeks. But none of these are going to really change the dial for you. But that is it for the Player of the Week selection review. Let me know if you spun. We're just going to do a cheeky one here while we're on the video. And hopefully get Van Dijk. Because even though we've got a beastly version of Van Dijk, I always like getting new cards to test. Of course we get Hasselic. Of course we do. Anyway, we will continue the spins on our main live stream tomorrow until then don't forget to subscribe we're back baby and i will see you in the live stream next